This is a project like we've never done before. This is a project like we've never seen done before. I mean, we had people in different states that were rooting for, for this project, for this crew to win. By the end of the project, they went to some of our guys and they said, you know, would you, would you like to leave this project? And they were like, we're not leaving. We're gonna stay here until this is done. Bat Cove West is a big deal for Casco Bay. Every time it rains, raw sewage flows into the bay. Batco West is a storage conduit for 2.25 million gallons of sewage and stormwater. And what this huge conduit does is it captures the first inch of stormwater, which is the most toxic. All that 2.25 million gallons of waste is then pumped to the treatment plant and the stormwater and the sewage are cleaned up and cleaner water is released into the bay. This is part of a 30-year effort that the city of Portland have undertaken to reduce and eliminate eventually these CSO discharges. Bat Cove being one of the most high-profile, high-visibility water bodies in Portland, the goal is to try to eliminate that discharge. So the storage is a central component to their plan. So Wright Pierce was involved in the design of the project. Sergeant came on board and said, we'd like to look at approaching the project a little bit differently. So they hired Wright Pierce and looked at reducing the length of the box, essentially make it almost twice as wide, not as long, so that they could excavate less and, and remove less ledge. I think it saved us about a million dollars. One of the big factors considered in this is why the tank is so deep is the sewer runs underground. So it's already five to six feet, then it overflows at an elevation about a, you know below grade like that. And then our tank has to be below that to capture that before everything overflows. The deepest portion of the project was between 25 to 30 feet to bottom of excavation. And for a major project like this to install these tanks that are 20 or so feet wide in a street down 25 feet deep, really requires a ton of planning and extra work. So to me, it was, it was as much care as innovate. You know, in preparing for the project, we knew we had a challenge on our hands. So we spent uh, about six months just doing a lot of planning and preparation for the approach we were gonna take for the project. We identified uh, one of the biggest challenges on this job was the installation of the box culverts themselves. The corridor that this street, Baxter Boulevard, is on has trees that line the corridor that were actually planted uh, right around the end of World War I. They have dog tags even from soldiers that were killed in World War I in them, so it was very much off limits to touch the trees. That instantly made it very difficult to get a crane in for the type of work we had to do. So we had to get creative. We explored large cranes, we explored large excavators to try to set these boxes. But at the end of the day, the uh, gantry crane was definitely the way to go. The next issue was how do you dig out the boxes one at a time sequentially and can't get a long stick excavator to reach far enough. Came up with the concept of going with a widened excavator. The whole idea really came from a fellow employee that shared a post on Facebook of a widened excavator. I sent it to Doug Morrison. I said, Doug, I think this might work for us for what we're trying to do. I believe that one was only widened to about 14 feet and uh, we joked at first, you know, we should try to build something like that. And knowing the parameters we had to be at was 39 feet. I researched a, a local engineering company. It was Foresight Engineering out of Lincoln, Maine. And between the two of us, came up with the engineering drawings. We had our own fab shop. Essentially build the whole thing right in our backyard. And that gave the operator the ability to stand above the hole, see it 360, see everything around him, and be able to reach everything that he needed to. And it really sped the project up. And once we got in the street, things went very well, and the operator who was there, he stuck with it, ran the machine the entire time, and that crew just every day saw an improvement. By the end of it, they were really clicking on all cylinders. We were just about exactly a year from start to finish, from when we put the first box into the final piece. It was really cool to see the effort that the crew continued to put in right to the very end to try to make improvements, find ways to do it better. They really did a great job.
I'm just so proud of the way that they went about their work, the values they put into the work. You know, their hearts are in this. They're going to drive on that road in decades with their grandchildren and go, I was down underneath here. I think contractors will look at this project and, and look at what Sargent did and, and the benefits that Portland will receive as a result of it, finishing as they did and, and the work that they did. I, I think it was a great project. It's important work. It's unbelievably important work. The public is going to see an improvement in the water quality, and that's what it's all about, being able to use, uh, you know, backhoe for recreational activities. I, I think this job could have an impact for years to come, decades to come, uh, for what it did from an environmental standpoint for the city of Portland, and from there, just the construction techniques, the construction methodology, and if nothing else, I hope people say it and say, you know, there's a better way to do something all the time. Go out and find the better mousetrap and don't be afraid to try it.